Good afternoon from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. My name's Linda and welcome to Complex PDSD TV and it's great to be back with you. It's been a little while, not as long as last time and it's been crazy busy. We're getting ready to move in a couple of weeks so forgive me, I haven't forgotten you. It's um been lovely reading your comments and I really appreciate that you reach out and share what's happening for you because our journeys are so individual. For those who are new here, welcome. Uh, there's lots and lots of videos to watch and they're very practical. Uh, I walk this recovery journey as well. So don't be afraid, <laughs> you're not alone and I understand how much the fear can cripple us. So today I want to do two things. I want to be able to help you see the difference between interdependency and codependency and then I want to give you an example, a real life example of how powerful the brain is when it's wired in our childhood and how it's so easy for us to slip back into codependency and not even be aware of it um, from being triggered. So interdependency in a relationship is when there's a mutual reliance on each other and a balance of give and take. And in codependency, one person does most of the giving and receives little support or help in return. And even if you ask for it, you find it really hard to get any support or help in return. So sometimes it can feel like you're beating your head against a brick wall. That's a, I don't know if that's a saying globally or not, but it's a saying here, it's like, oh, I'm just getting nowhere with this. Uh, interdependency is asking for and giving help and um, promotes growth, learning and self-sufficiency. Okay. And codependency enabling is disguised as help and it creates dependency and stunts personal growth. So you'll notice that in your life, the codependency comes up where you can be always helping other people, always having a belief and it can be a intergenerational belief passed down that you need to be there to help everyone in your family or all those around you. And the reality is we haven't been taught that we're adults, they're an adult and they need to be able to take charge of the direction of their life too. So there was a post on my Instagram about enabling if you want to check out that, that list of what happens there. Interdependency, we have our own sense of self and being our own separate person. And codependency, there's a meshment or a merging of identity and feelings so that neither person functions like a whole independent person. And with complex trauma, one of the key things is the sense of proprioception, which we've lost along the way and we need to redevelop because Proprioception helps us step into the here and now and the space that we're in and know that we own our own space. It's a sensation, it's not a lo logical process. With interdependency, we feel free to be our authentic self, what's and all, and apologies. And with codependency, we lose sight of our own interests, goals, values, and instead do and say what your partner wants or needs. And I'd like to add to that that we don't actually check in with them what they want or need because with complex trauma, we can be highly sensitive to people in our environment and we can read the room really well. And so part of our growth is to remember, now I've got to step back and let them work through and process their own stuff. Challenging but doable. With interdependency, we fully experience our own feelings and with codependency, we tend to absorb other people's feelings and suppress our own. Remembering with complex trauma that the suppression is an automatic habit from years ago and we need to learn how to step back into feeling our own feelings, how to express them, how to understand our needs and what we need to do going forward. Interdependency, we know we have value, even when others are upset with us. And codependency, we rely on other people to make us feel worthy. So there's two things there. It's 
developing our sense of self, which there's an ebook in my shop for developing how to develop your sense of self, because we never had that happen when we were growing up. And the other side of it is uh, one of my beautiful clients said yesterday about values. They said, I realized that how they treated me had everything to do with their values and nothing to do with how much I am valuable. And I just sat here and went, just really touched my heart, really did, because it was like, that makes perfect sense. How we treat other people is based on our values. Okay, we interdependency, we feel safe and secure in the relationship and we provide that for other people too, it's a mutual thing. And in codependency, we fear rejection, criticism, and abandonment. In interdependency, we're able to disagree or say no without guilt. I'd like to know how that's done. <laughs> no, <laughs> I get better at it. But yeah, we still feel like, am I doing the right thing by saying no? But we are. Especially as adults, we've got to learn to say no. And one of the things that I did many, many years ago it was a whole new concept to learn. I'm allowed to say no. I don't have to just get up and run around and do everything at the drop of a hat or volunteer for everything. And I really had to sit back and think about what does all of that mean saying no. And then I realized, well, I had the experience then of saying no. And then someone else would jump in and fill the spot. So it was like, oh, wow. Okay. But there's whole different levels of saying no. So don't stress. Just start with one and recognise what you need to say no to. That's the first step. And with interdependency, honesty and the ability to admit mistakes helps promote growth. Okay. In codependency, denial and defensiveness keep things stagnant. And just think of... Am I feeling like I'm going around the same circle again and again and again and there's no change in my behaviour, there's no change in their behaviour and it's not healthy for either of you to be in that situation, okay? Now, for me, recently, a um, number of weeks ago, I started having a friendship with someone new and then about four weeks into it, I realized I got triggered initially. So I dealt with that, um, you know, the codependency, fear of abandonment. And I went, oh my gosh, like it was a real physical sensation running through my body. And I'm like, I just never expected it at all. With all the um, recovering work I've done, I just, it just hit me out of the blue. So I talked about that, said what I needed, what I didn't need. You know, I don't need somebody to take on uh, like nurturing me or anything like that. I can meet my needs. I just need you to be aware that this is what happens when I get triggered. And, and, and that's helpful because I'm responsible for navigating my way through new relationships. It's not up to somebody else to be there and say, well, you know what you want them to say. I can ask for what I need. The second thing was uh, about four weeks into the new friendship and all of a sudden something happened and just I realised that I needed to ask the question, what do I need? Now, that question can sound like, what do I need as in my needs? But it actually held a number of different facets to of where am I going with my life? Where does this friendship fit into my new life? Have I put anything down? Do I need to pick anything back up in my life? What are my goals that I was working towards? And as I asked the question, I found that, or I began to see that my first thought every morning was around the conversation we would have that night. And then I realized that I hadn't been working as much as I normally do. And I went, why? Why would I have slipped into not doing my regular amount of work? And I was sitting there scratching my head through it all. And I went, oh my goodness, I've been triggered, but it's been so subtle. Like, 
if you think of a record and how they record the music on it and all the bumps in it, well, you know when there's a bump because, you, you know, there's a scratch, right? However, this was so seamless, it was like the needle of moving across the record and I never even noticed the difference, okay? So I'd gone back into survival brain without noticing it and my behaviour had become a number of things in the codependency list and I just went, blow my mind. It was like, this happens at such an unconscious automatic subtle level to fall back into ways of codependency because that was my natural state of being so then what i had to do was sit down and go okay first of all what do i need what do i want what do i want for my life and i went i really want to do this work and i've got specific goals that i'm doing with this work and i went oh my goodness, I've got to get back into reframing my day around my goals, which I did. But the other thing I did was also let the friend know that this is what I've been doing and I don't like it. And a couple of things that I noticed throughout it was I started talking about the past again and I've actually gone through significant recovery that I don't feel the need to talk about the past again because of where my healing journey is at. I'm here right now and I'm moving into where my life is headed. One of the things that is normal when you've gone through divorce is to go through a healing stage of reflecting, you know, what could I have done differently? And I've been through that. And then one day, one of my sons said to me, Mum, pastor's over, it's gone. And I went, I really do need to change my thinking around this. And ever since then, I've worked really hard to just let it go, knowing I couldn't have changed anything. And even if I could have, I can't change the other person. So quite often in a divorce, we're left in a situation where we are left with no choice but to leave because the other person won't commit to healing and growing and using the relationship to come together closer okay so in a relationship and i have this with my friendships is where we come together and we share information we share relationship we share really healthy things and we all go away from it with our own ability to reflect and go okay yeah this is where i'm headed next and be supportive of each other so I hope this gives you some insight into further down the recovery track and also I really wanted to emphasize how it can be so subtle that the survival trigger goes off and we go back into those maladaptive behaviors of codependency. Remember to like and subscribe and have a beautiful day and you can check out the links for all the free and paid paid resources and the book and whenever you're ready okay take it easy and i'll do another video soon bye for now